Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. Today, John Combe and I are again with Dr. Liz Lister. And what are we talking about today? <laughs> Dr. Liz, you know what we're talking about. We left off, we were talking about skin, gave us a whole description of how the skin works. And you promised that we would talk about taking care of our skin. So the floor is yours. Wonderful. Well, I thought it'd be helpful for everyone to just, for us to do a quick recap of the layers of the skin. I like to talk about it as three layers. That's the easiest for people to remember. There's a lot more technicalities, but this is what matters in terms of people and uh, our ability to take care of our skin. So three layers. The outermost layer is the epidermis. All right, that's the waterproof layer. It is the main barrier protecting against infection and helping us with temperature regulation overall. That's what the skin does. So the epidermis, we've got this outer layer shedding all the time, a total turnover about every 30 days or so, all new, we're a whole new person from a skin standpoint. The middle layer is the dermis, which is the thickest layer. It's 90% of the thickness of the skin. And that's where all, that's where most of the action is. The hair follicles are based there, sweat glands, nerve ending, nerve endings, blood flow. So oil glands are producing oil, sweat glands are producing sweat. Lots going on in that middle layer, the dermis. And the lowermost layer is the hypodermis. The hypodermis is like a cushion. It's got cushion for the bones and the muscles. It's got the larger blood vessels and the larger nerves, and it's made up of fat and connective tissue. So those are the main layers to think about when we're talking about our skin and how to take care of our skin. Okay. All right, now you mentioned the magic word, how to take care of our skin, because the skincare industry uh, is multi-billion dollar <laughs> industry, but it's there because we all do care about our skin. We care, our skin is how we look. And particularly as we age, um, you know, this skin up here that, that gets crepey yes. hands, people always look at their uh, somebody's hands to see how old they are. Yeah, and yeah. it also, it also feels as if there's a same. lot of uh, uh, stuff that's true and not true. So uh, right. uh, what's, the, what's the basic skinny on taking care of yourself, your skin? Basic skinny on the skin. I like that. One distinction I wanted to draw for our audience is... What does it mean when people talk about medical grade skin care? Medical grade skin care. And it really means a couple of things. First of all, it refers to the percentage of the active ingredients. Okay, so for example, there's a lot of things that are over the counter in a low strength, but they're going to be prescription at a higher strength. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to pick it up at the pharmacy because the other feature of most medical grade skin care is that it is sold through doctors, right? So either through a dermatologist or whoever you're going to who is taking care of your skin. And so it is controlled in a more pharmaceutical approach where the amounts of the active ingredients are verifiable, all right? There's a lot of people out there mixing up their own products and selling them. Whereas with medical grade skin care, there will always be a third party verifying the percentage and the actual content of the active ingredients. That's a kind of a working definition for our listeners and viewers of what people mean when they say medical grade skincare products. Okay, so what what are the what are the basic things that uh, people should be thinking about uh, to uh, improve or maintain their skin health? Do you have a couple of uh, bullet points for us? I do. I sure do. The don'ts are really easy to remember. I'll say the don'ts and then I'll say the do's. All right. The don'ts are super easy to remember. Don't smoke. All right. If you smoke, cut down, quit if you can. That's number one. Don't smoke. Number two is don't tan on purpose. <laughs> This may be hard for some people to hear. There's a lot of sun worshipers out there among us. However, tanning beds are not our friend. 
the days long time ago, this was in my teenage years of going out with baby oil and burning the skin on purpose in order to then develop a tan. Not surprisingly, this is a bad idea for our skin health. All right, so those are the don'ts. The do's are also pretty straightforward. Number one, wear sunscreen. Pretty simple, most people are aware of this. This is a good idea. Use somewhat gentle products for maintenance of skincare. There's a lot of products out there, especially with the medical grade skincare that are stronger, and that's okay for procedures, uh, doing peels and treatments on the skin from time to time. However, for maintenance, it's not necessary to be very rough with our skin. Our skin is designed to be self-maintaining, and we need to do a good job just in terms of using a, a cleansing routine and doing a basic good routine. A couple of other do's are managing stress. A lot mm. of people manifest stress as well as other things such as food sensitivities through the skin, all of which get better when we are managing and doing our best that we can in terms of managing stress. And last but not least, just for right now, is do get your skin checked out. Do have a dermatologist do what they call a skin check, where they really look at you head to toe so that you're keeping an eye on any freckles that may become changed in size or pigmentation or other types of bumps or changes on our skin. You want to have somebody objectively looking at you and keeping an eye from one, at least one year to the next. Well, I say amen to that. Uh, I've been going to uh, yep. dermatologists for uh, probably about 15 uh, years, light skin, blue eye. Uh, I was brown as berry every summer for most of my 20s and 30s. Uh, just being out, I mean, we belong to a beach club uh, on the ocean. You talk yeah. about exposure. And um, uh, so a dermatologist, uh, I can truly say, saved my life. So found the melanoma early, got to it before it got to uh, uh, any of the nodes and stuff. So that's very important. But just as a, a, a general hint for most of our audience, besides go to the dermatologist, the other do's and don'ts you have, uh, what about things like moisturizers and things like that? You could spend so much money on that. Do you have any basics for other than medical grade that a, 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 a trained professional would offer? Uh, any basic things that people can use to keep their skin moisturized if it dry? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's usually good to work in layers. And there's also a movement afoot started by a particular company that I am very fond of, that I use their products, that is, the movement is called Clean Beauty. The beauty and cosmetics industry is so shockingly unregulated. This goes back to the 1960s when there were starting to be laws for companies to reveal ingredients so that people could see what the ingredients were <clears throat> in things that they were eating and products that they were using. So we use skin lotions, also the laundry detergent, etc. So a lot of people are working on that now, what's called clean beauty, where we want to use products that leave out certain ingredients. And back in the 1960s, what happened was the company said, we can't tell the ingredients because that's proprietary. That would be giving away our secrets. And they lobbied the industry regulating bodies and Congress to call, for example, fragrance. So if you see fragrance on a product that you're using, that means that you have no idea what's in it. That's a term that they've been able to use for the last 50, 60 years to hide if they're using certain ingredients. Other parts of the world, for example, in Europe, have about 1,500 or more banned ingredients in skincare, whereas here in the United States, we have just over 30 banned ingredients. So clean beauty is a way of being able to tell. And uh, so I'll attach more information for our viewers to put in the link with the video so that they can learn a little bit more about these issues and the ingredients to look for to not 
have if you can at all avoid. Now, Dr. Oh. Liz, we made reference uh, a little while ago to skin cancer. That is a huge, huge topic and deserving of another video somewhere down the road. Perfect. Um, but before we say goodbye, is there anything else? Those are really the important points that I wanted to leave our viewers with for right now. The, the layers of the skin, therefore we have layers of products that we use. So for example, after I cleanse, I put on a base toning for the skin. Then there's a serum, depending on what's happening with my skin. And then there's a moisturizer. So there's different layers to apply that can be very helpful to taking care of our skin. Mm -hmm. We'll, well, we'll be sure to we'll be sure to to uh, try to schedule uh, future uh, episodes uh, on this topic. Uh, and again, thank you uh, for uh, uh, giving us information that will be in the link below this in the uh, video. And we look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you. Likewise. Welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.